For this session, we will be looking at ad hoc charting. This is going to be for forms that are not held within iView. So on our toolbar, we're going to click on ad hoc. On the left hand side, you'll see different folders of forms. On default, it opens to general RN forms. So if you don't see what you're looking for, look through the different folders to find the correct form. Today we're going to look at the pre-procedure surgery checklist. A couple things to point out before we begin uh, completing the form. On the left hand side, you'll see two different sections of this form. Each has a red asterisk. This indicates that something in that section is required. Second, when you open the form, it defaults in the current date and time. Be sure if you're entering information on a form such as event charting, you should change the time to the time the event occurred. So looking at the form, we know what's required by the yellow boxes or fields. fields. Uh, we must address those before we can sign the form. So we'll start by entering in the procedure or surgery, making sure we don't use any abbreviations. And then we'll start addressing those required fields. Identification band, that's their arm band. Is it on and verified as correct? If they have an allergy band, uh, or if they have allergies, is the band on and verified? We'll say NA. Our patient does not have any allergies. No issues with skin breakdown, no history of diabetes, or ICD pacemaker, no other implants. Uh, this patient will be transported with oxygen. Obstructive sleep apnea. So if the patient has a history of sleep apnea or uses a CPAP or BiPAP, it's important for us to note this so we can ensure post-procedure monitoring includes um, the obstructive sleep apnea protocol and precautions. Here you'll notice vital signs don't pull over from previous documentation. So we will need to input vital signs. When we do that, just a note, um, this will add an entry for vital signs in the patient's chart with this date and time that we're documenting. So we wanna be sure that these are relatively recent, so they are pretty accurate. Uh, last oral and fluid, uh, fluid, fluid and food intake. We'll say at midnight today. In this section regarding medications, um, it doesn't pull administration times from your MAR, so you will need to refer back to the MAR to input this information. This next section here, we will complete prior to the patient uh, going for the procedure, addressing all of those required fields. Say so NA, my patient doesn't use contacts or eyeglasses. They don't have any dental appliances or hair accessories. We'll take their hearing aids out. Patient doesn't have any loose teeth. Say our patient will avoid on call to the procedural area. 
this next section here is uh, to be completed uh, in the holding area. So we will bypass that. This last section here, checklist review, this is done when the procedural area has come to pick up the patient. Um, it's completed between the sending nurse and receiving nurse or staff that's come to pick up the patient. Since this section's done right as the patient's being taken, we'll likely have all other sections complete. So we can save this form um, and we'll do that by clicking on this floppy disk uh, in, in just a moment. Before we save, let's look at the allergies and med list. We'll confirm if the procedural area has been notified of any latex, iodine, or tape allergies. We don't have any of those, so I'll click NA. My patient doesn't have any drug allergies, so I'll mark that as reviewed. And then I can see that uh, medications have been addressed. You'll see that the red asterisk is now gone for both of those uh, sections. But remember, we didn't complete that checklist review here on this first section down here at the bottom. We didn't complete that, so let's save this form and we'll come back to complete when the patient's ready to be taken down for procedure. So we'll click the floppy disk to save. We can close this ad hoc charting box. So now we'll say the procedural area has come to pick up the patient, so we need to complete that last section. So from our table of contents, we want to click on forms. We'll see our pre-procedure surgery checklist shows as in progress. So to complete the remaining documentation, I'm going to right click on that form name and select modify. I'll move down to the bottom of the checklist and see that section that needs to be completed. So I can search for the names of the two people involved, either by typing their name in here or clicking on the magnifying glass as a search feature. Now I can sign off the form by clicking on the green check mark. Now if we look back at our form section, I see that same form, but its status is now verified, showing that it's been completed and signed off. Looking at forms, there's a couple things I'd like to point out. You can change the sorting view of documents by clicking this drop down and setting a different sorting filter. If you need to unchart a form, maybe it was the wrong patient or you selected the wrong form, you can right click and hit unchart. Anytime you unchart documentation in PowerChart, you will have to leave a comment. Click the green check mark to save that. Now my form shows as in error and has a line drawn through it. This indicates that this has been uncharted. Additionally, if you look at this gray bar up here that's got the date range in it, you'll notice it's currently set to show forms from the date of admission through the current date. We can change the search criteria if we want to find a form um, that was completed during a previous admission. So I can change this date range to capture anything that falls within that new range. So if there were any forms that fell into this new range that I input, those forms would then show here. I can double click and open up the form for any information that I was looking for. 
And this concludes looking at ad hoc and forms.